In nucleophilic acyl substitution, carboxylic acids have more limited reactivity than acid chlorides and anhydrides, which we saw in the previous two videos. This is due to the poor leaving group, hydroxide, on the carbonyl carbon of a carboxylic acid. However, one prominent reaction of carboxylic acids that circumvents this problem is known as Fischer esterification. And in Fischer esterification, a carboxylic acid and an alcohol are united to form an ester in the presence of catalytic acid. Carboxylic acids can also be converted to amides. One method for doing this is heating at high temperatures with amines. However, this method is harsh and therefore rarely useful. So it is much more common to convert the carboxylic acid to its acid chloride through treatment with thionyl chloride and then to the amide through treatment with an amine. Fischer esterification begins with the protonation of the carbonyl oxygen. Protonation always occurs on the carbonyl oxygen as opposed to the carboxyl oxygen because when protonation occurs on the carbonyl oxygen, the oxonium ion that results is resonance stabilized. It's useful to note that the proton source can be written in three slightly different formats. The proton source may simply be written as H+. Alternatively, the proton may come from whichever specific acid is added to the mixture. This is usually sulfuric acid. When sulfuric acid is mixed with an alcohol, the alcohol will be protonated, so you may also see the conjugate acid of the alcohol used as the proton source. It was this last option that was employed during the protonation of the carboxylic acid. The way that the acid was represented here was as the conjugate acid of the alcohol used in the reaction. Once it is protonated, the carboxylic acid is more electrophilic at the carbonyl carbon. Consequently, the alcohol now attacks this center and in the process pushes pi electrons onto the adjacent oxygen atom. The first of several tetrahedral intermediates is formed in this way. The oxonium ion of the tetrahedral intermediate then loses a proton in order to yield a neutral tetrahedral intermediate. This neutral tetrahedral intermediate can then be protonated on any of its three oxygen atoms. However, protonation of the alkoxy group would merely be a reversal of the previous step. Instead, protonation of either hydroxyl group allows the reaction to move forward by generating a good leaving group, in this case, water. Water then dissociates at the same time that the carbonyl is reformed. Finally, a proton is shed to the medium to yield the neutral ester as the ultimate reaction product. Notice that the acid is indeed catalytic. Two protons are consumed during the reaction. This happens in the first step of the reaction and in the fourth step of the reaction. However, two protons are liberated as well. And this happens in the third step of the reaction as well as in the sixth step of the reaction. So ultimately, there is no net change in the number of protons present and therefore the acid is a genuine catalyst. 
Fischer esterification is freely reversible. In fact, we'll see the reverse reaction, which is the hydrolysis of an ester, in the next video on the nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions of esters. In this case, though, the position of equilibrium is often controlled by using excess alcohol to drive the reaction toward the ester. And this is an example of using Le Chatelier's principle to push a reaction to completion. As we noted at the beginning of this video, carboxylic acids may also be converted to amides. The conversion of an acid to an amide can be achieved through reaction of a carboxylic acid with an amine. However, this reaction is rarely practical. Since amines are fairly basic and carboxylic acids are acidic, they readily undergo a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction. And this yields an unreactive salt. It's only through heating at very high temperatures that the reaction can be pushed forward through dehydration. This approach is very harsh and therefore it is rarely utilized. Instead, it is much easier to convert the acid to the acid chloride through treatment with thionyl chloride. This much more reactive acid chloride then readily reacts with an amine to yield an amide. The mechanisms for these processes may be found in the videos on the reaction of carboxylic acids with thionyl chloride and the nucleophilic acyl substitutions of acid chlorides. Let's turn our attention to some specific examples. In the following reaction, propionic acid is treated with ethanol in the presence of catalytic acid to produce ethyl propionate. The reaction begins with the protonation of propionic acid by the conjugate acid of ethanol. The electrophilic carbonyl carbon is next attacked by ethanol, which leads to the formation of a tetrahedral intermediate as pi electrons are displaced onto oxygen. The loss of a proton from the oxonium ion neutralizes the charge on the ethoxy group. This neutral tetrahedral intermediate can then be reprotonated on one of its hydroxyl groups. Water is then ejected from the substrate as the tetrahedral intermediate collapses. And finally, a proton is lost to the medium so as to generate the neutral ester, in this case ethyl propionate, as the reaction product. On this slide, we have a specific example of amide formation. When benzoic acid and methylamine are combined, an acid-base reaction ensues. While high heat can push the reaction toward amide formation through dehydration, an alternative approach is typically preferable. And that alternate approach is to convert benzoic acid to benzoyl chloride through treatment with thionyl chloride. Subsequent reaction with two equivalents of methylamine yields N-methyl benzamide. In summary, carboxylic acids, although less reactive than acid chlorides and anhydrides, can still engage in nucleophilic acyl substitution. In Fischer esterification, a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol in the presence of catalytic acid to yield an ester and water. The mechanism follows the nucleophilic acyl substitution motif 
and the equilibrium can be pushed toward the ester by using excess alcohol. For other conversions of carboxylic acids, the most straightforward method is to convert the acid to its corresponding acid chloride using thionyl chloride. Then, the acid chloride can be converted into any carboxylic acid derivative via nucleophilic acyl substitution. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, and in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.